wonderful sight. This happened today in Cairo. These mummies were moved from their, where they've long been housed at the Cairo Museum, and they were moved to the uh, Egyptian National uh, Museum of Civilization. And uh, I'm going to be there in just a couple days. I bought my ticket online today. I'm, le I'm headed out to Egypt. So I'm calling this the Parade of Mummies and Pi. Okay. So phi and pi are interesting uh, Greek letters that refer to constants. And phi is often talked about in relationship to the Great Pyramid in Giza. So here is Hemiunas' tomb, the architect of the Great Pyramid. And if we go along the southern border of his tomb and make this rectangle, uh, we can find that it's defined by the center of Khufu and by the center of Khafre. And uh, the, the middle of Menkara up is its side. So incredible. So now let's do this other uh, rectangle here that's defined by the center of Khafre and the middle of Menkara. Okay, so basically those are in phi proportion to each other, those two rectangles. It's built into the Giza Plateau. The Great Pyramid, uh, we can look at it either in proportions or in the actual cubits. The actual cubits, it's 356 royal cubits in the apothem, 220 in the half base, and 280 royal cubits is the height of the, the actual height of the Great Pyramid. Now in proportions, the apothem, if we say that's phi, then the height is the square root of phi, and the half base is one. Incredible, a phi pyramid. It's so powerful, so interesting. So as I said, the lower rectangles in phi proportion to the upper larger rectangle. The idea of growth is built into this. The Great Pyramid is also a phi proportion pyramid, as well as a pi pyramid. But how is it a pi pyramid? I want to search this out. I wanted something that was neat like the phi, you know, phi, root of phi one. I wanted something clean like that. Now we know this, we know that the Great Pyramid squares uh, the circle in terms of circumference. So uh, if we take the, the height of the Great Pyramid right there, just take the height, and then we take the base of the Great Pyramid, okay, then the, the perimeter of the base equals the circumference of the circle formed by the height of the Great Pyramid. So incredible. We know that, that pi is there because the circumference and the base, okay. But I wanted something neat still, something clean integers like we saw with, with the phi pyramid. So, okay, let me turn the pyramid at an angle. Let's look at its edge instead of looking at the face, which we usually look at. So if we look at the edge, we're still going to have that same 280 height, but now you've got 622 instead of 440. We're not looking at the side. We're looking at this at the edge. So from corner to corner, it's 622 you know, royal cubits. So it's wider when you look at it from, from this side instead of looking at it from the front, okay? So the, the half of that would be 311, obviously. So I thought, well, maybe I can get some pi out of this because I don't want to have to draw the circle in the square like that. Oh, 622 divided by 280. Hey, 2.22, interesting. It's not pi. 311 divided by 280. You know, the half uh, base divided by the height is 1.11. Interesting, but still not pi. And then if you take the height divided by the half base, it's 0.9 exactly. Some very interesting numbers, but not pi, okay? Now, when you draw that, that circle that whose radius, you know, is, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to lead to the circle that's the same circumference, notice it goes inside of the vertices of the pyramid. So we don't have a neat, clean thing from that. Uh, and w if you remember the other way, the circle went outside the vertices, so how can I get to this, this neat pyramid that I want, this pyramid that's like the phi pyramid? Okay, well, uh, the original length of the, uh, of the Great Pyramid was uh, 440 royal cubits, approximately. Okay, but uh, these casing stones are missing now. So we can't say it's 440 because those are all gone. So the actual, when we look at the exterior, that's what we see today. I'm so looking forward to being there a, a few days. It's going to be my eighth expedition to Egypt, and uh, it's so powerful, so wonderful. Come with me sometime. So you can see there's 10 royal cubits there from where the stones are that we actually see at the Great Pyramid to where it actually was. So if we subtract that from both sides, then the current length of the Great Pyramid is not 440, which you see in a lot of the you know ideal pictures of the pyramid. It's about 419 royal cubits based on what I just showed you. Okay. So, as I said, geometricians often show the Great Pyramid as, as a phi pyramid proportionally. I wanted to see what it, if I could get a pi proportion going here. Now, there's the neat phi proportion we talked about. Phi for the apothem, square root of phi for the height, and then one for the half base. So, I assign pi as the proportion to substitute for the Great Pyramid's current height, which is 261.7 royal cubits. It's not the 280 because we're talking about what's actually existing there. There's no pyramid on the top, no pyramidian. So following this idea, the base of the pyramid, as, as it exists currently at about four, 219 royal cubits, is very close to the whole number five, 
and the side is very close to four. Incredible. So I found this beautiful pyramid I was looking for. If we called the height pi, and then we we got the base of five, and the 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 uh, the the side of four. It's almost like the beautiful three four five triangle of Pythagoras, but it's not. It's a it's a it's a pi pyramid. So. Uh, I've never seen this before, so I consider this a major discovery, but I'm sure others have probably noticed this. But finding it for myself makes it feel like a wonderful discovery. So I'm amazed, as always, at the wisdom embedded in the Great Pyramid. Something else really amazing from this, I think, is that the half base would be 2.5, okay? Which is the square root of 2 times pi, which is, in theory, the finite sum of the infinite product. Now, that seems impossible that the infinite product could have a finite sum, but that's what some mathematicians say. Unbelievable. All right, so the meaning of pi. Well, pi is infinite. It goes on infinitely. All birthdays are in it, I think. All numbers are in it. All truth is encoded in its endless numerical march. No one can ever eventually know it or understand it. It's infinite. It's too great. Although we can practically use it, 22 sevens, 3.14159, even though it's infinite, it's usable and knowable in that sense. So a circle appears from pi. Pi has this magic. It turns a line into a circle. Eternity, powerful, okay? Powerful, circles from pi, okay? So we start with a point. Start with a point. I have a point I wanna make. Could you listen to me? And so you make the point, you draw a line. All right, and then from that, apply pi. And when you apply pi to that thought, oh, bingo, a circle appears. Wonderful. Okay, that's eternity. All right, let's think some more about this. The truth exists. That's a proposition that, that I accept, and it's why I search and seek. Somebody speaks it in a way you get it. Some guru, some magician, some mentor speaks the truth, and you get it. Okay, they speak the truth. The infinite one applies his spirit to your understanding. That's pi. Okay, the Alpha and Omega appears. The circle is an ancient symbol of God and heaven, as the square is a symbol for earth. And so, eternity as a gift. So, Hotchip's put, Ramses, I noticed today that you were carted by a vehicle from one museum to another in the Parade of the Mummies. What I want to know is, did you find what you were looking for in the next life? Because a mummy, that's not much of a life. We hope that you have life beyond the grave. That's the great hope of pi in a circle in the Alpha and Omega. <laughs>